All right, so welcome to the final segment of our tutorial series on doing time lapse. In this segment, we're going to talk about removing flicker that can sometimes occur when you're doing time lapse, as we've talked about, especially if you're doing sunrise or sunset, where you have to have the camera in some sort of semi automatic mode. This usually results in flicker, and it's a very easy thing to get rid of. And as you might not be surprised to know, I'm going to talk about Digital Anarchy's Flickr Free plugin, uh, which was specifically designed to remove Flickr from time lapse, although it works pretty fabulously on other types of Flickr. But obviously, here we're talking about just time lapse. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. It's a relatively new plugin from us, Flickr Free. And you'll see the first thing that comes up is time lapse in the preset. The reason Flickr Free exists is that I was pretty unhappy with the existing plugins and tools for getting rid of Flickr from time lapse. I've been doing time lapse for quite some time, and there used to be a product that was excellent at getting rid of Flickr, uh, and it got discontinued. So I knew what a good Flickr removal tool looks like. And I had been unable to find a product that worked as well. So we set about the task of creating a really good deflicker plugin. And that is Flickr Free. And so it's extremely powerful. But the other thing that we really wanted Flickr Free to be is super easy to use. So it's mostly preset based. You can see all the different types of presets that we have here. And we're adding more as we go along, as we find other examples and other settings that work well. But you'll notice that aside from the presets, there's really only a few parameters. And this is because for most of the flicker that happens, it's very similar. And you don't really need 30 different parameters with every last setting that you could possibly adjust. And so we set up our presets to mimic the different types of flicker that happens with video footage. And then you have a few parameters in here that you can make changes to. The presets are good, but sometimes you need to dial it in a little bit for your specific footage. But the number of parameters is definitely not overwhelming. And most of the time, the presets just work. In the case of time lapse, you know, obviously I have a lot of time lapse footage. We've been throwing this at all sorts of different time lapse footage. And the settings you see here work on probably 97% plus of the time lapse footage that I have. And it's a pretty wide range of, of things. So we're pretty confident this is going to work pretty well for your footage. And I'll describe what the parameters do. So if you do need to make some tweaks, you'll have some idea of what's going on here. Sensitivity is what tells Flickr Free the size of the area that it wants it should look at to identify the flicker. Now, in the case of time lapse, it's kind of a full frame type of flicker. It's happening because of the exposure, and the exposure, of course, affects the entire image. In other types of flickering footage, especially if the camera is out of sync with, say, the electric lights, you end up with these rolling band types of flicker. And in that case, you really want sensitivity set down to 10, maybe 5, maybe even 3 to help deal with those problems. But for time lapse, it's really a full frame type of flicker. And so a sensitivity of 30 is appropriate. The time radius sets how many frames flicker free is going to analyze to figure out how to make the adjustments to deflicker the footage. In this case, what's happening is we are looking at eight frames before the current frame, the current frame, which makes nine frames, and then another eight frames after the current frame for a total of 17 frames. So that's a lot of images that Flickr Free is analyzing to figure out what the best brightness value for a given frame is going to be. Uh, this can go up as high as 10. The sort of minimum usable number here is about 5 or 6, but 8 is a pretty good value. Uh, all channels should always be on. This may be a parameter that goes away eventually, but for now it's in there. 
and the threshold sets the amount of brightness that Flicker Free is trying to correct. In most cases, the flickering in a given shot is really not that extreme. Let's take a look at our bridge image, our bridge footage, and it's flickering. And you can see there's a pretty obvious flicker here, but it's not super dramatic. It's not like a light turning on and off. Really, the brightness is changing by 3%, 5%, maybe a little bit more, but it's not a huge percentage change. And so that's what Threshold tells Flicker Free. What percentage change am I looking for and trying to correct? Now, if you have footage that's flickering really badly, say you have you know, street light that's just like flickering literally on and off, or a neon sign, which does pretty much the same thing. In that case, you're going to crank threshold up to around 50 or 100%. And Flicker Free may or may not work for those extreme cases. But for situations like time lapse, where again, the flickering really is not that extreme, a threshold of 10 or 20% works really well and will really deal with that flicker problem. And then with time lapse, you always want to have detect motion on. Uh, with some other types of footage, you don't necessarily want to have it on. Although usually what we found is if you turn detect motion off, it helps to have a very small sensitivity value, say three or five. But for time lapse, we want to have that large sensitivity and detect motion works just fine with it. But if you see halos or ghosting in your footage, when you're playing flicker free, that's usually because detect motion is turned off. But it's been pretty rare that we see that in time lapse. So for time lapse, we just usually want detect motion turned on. And once that's applied, we can see what the final version looks like. It's beautiful, there's no flicker at all. And it's a great shot. We got the moon rising up behind the Bay Bridge. To be honest, I'd like to have some more of those clouds that I talked about earlier, those nice gauzy clouds that just kind of stream across the sky. But in this case, it's still a pretty nice piece of footage with the Bay Bridge lights and the moon and all the city lights. So it's quite pretty. But you can see again that the flicker is completely removed from this. We can take a look at the other version. And you can see how much flicker we had to begin with. And Flickr Free has done an excellent job of getting rid of that. So that's really all there is to Flickr Free. It's a very easy plugin to use. For time lapse, it really rocks it and really should solve your problem without you having to analyze histograms or any other complex parameter list of 30 parameters or anything like that. So it's very simple to use and very, very powerful. So we definitely recommend that you uh, check out the digitalanarchy.com website and download the trial version. Don't take my word for it. Please try it on your own footage and see how well it works. But if you head over to digitalanarchy.com, we have the trial downloads, we have other tutorials, free stuff, all sorts of interesting things on our website, including our other product, Beauty Box, for doing automatic skin retouching for video. But that's it for this tutorial and for this whole tutorial series. So I hope you've uh, gotten some interesting, good tips and tricks out of this. And thank you for joining me, and uh, keep an eye open for our other tutorials.